So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to leverage the ArcGIS REST API within Microsoft Flow. And in particular, we're going to discuss how to leverage this with Survey123 webhooks. This video will not discuss how to make a connection between Survey123 and Microsoft Flow. But there is a link in the description which will outline for you how to do this. As well, this video outlines in detail a blog released by me to Esri Canada's uh, blog, which will also be in the description. And so let's jump right in. Initially, the flow will start with the Survey123 trigger. And this trigger means that anytime a survey is submitted which matches one of the surveys that you own, the trigger will begin the flow. So in this case, when a survey is submitted for the Pilot Projects Hydrant Inspection Survey, it's going to jump to the next operation or next method in the list or action in the list. And so in our case, we are working with Secured Services in ArcGIS Online. And to work with Secured Services, we need to have a token. We can generate a token using the ArcGIS REST API's generate token operation, which is right here. And it accepts posts only. And so within Flow, there are actions called HTTP actions, which mimic web requests. And you can find it right here. This is what it looks like when it's blank, when we've just added it to our Flow. But we already have them pre-populated in our Flow in this case. And so, as we know, to generate a token, the method must be post. So we set the method here in this drop-down list to post. And then we point our URI to the generate token endpoint URL. Now, one important part to note is that the headers for this request should be in application xform URL encoded. And this is important because when we s make this HTTP request, the endpoint to generate the token needs to know the type of content that is being sent so it understands and can read the information being sent to it. So with that we need to include some parameters in our body and so the generate token requires that we pass the username, password, format, and refer in the post body. And so in our case we're passing our username, our password, the format which will be in JSON, and then our refer, which is ArcGIS.com, because we're working within ArcGIS Online. And so when this request is sent, the endpoint will return a JSON response. And for us to be able to understand what's in this response, we need to parse the JSON. And so within Microsoft Flow, there is an action in the data operations called parse JSON. And when you search for it, it's right there, parse JSON data operation. And so we have one pre-populated again in this flow. And in the item description to the link which discusses webhooks, Survey123, and Microsoft Flow, I've included the schema for what this response looks like. And you can copy that response from that blog and paste it into your schema here. But for the body, we want to pass the dynamic content body of the generate token HTTP action. So it's going to take that response, parse it down into this schema, and now we'll have some valuable information we can use in subsequent requests within Microsoft Flow. And so now we want to query a hosted feature service in ArcGIS Online. And in this case, we're going to be querying a parcels hosted feature service. And so the method will be get and will point to the URL of the particular service in question. And you can find this by going to your RTS Online content and viewing the item detail of the particular service you want to update and clicking on the service URL link and it will bring you to the REST endpoint. And we're going to copy this URL at the top and we're going to paste it into our URI, which will be right here. And then we're going to reference the query operation. And now this is where it gets important because the where parameters are the parameters which we're asking this service 
what information we want to know. And so we use two different pieces of dynamic content here, or variables. And the first is the parcel ID, and the second is the token which we just parsed down. So if we go to the see more option here, we see each of the three variables that have been parsed down in our parse token JSON data operation. And the one in particular that we want is the token. And so when populating our where clause, we can include these dynamic content variables in our URIs. And so in this case, we're going to be looking for every feature within the parcels hosted feature service, which match the parcel ID of the submitted survey record. And it's going to return again a JSON response. And we want to parse this JSON down again into a format that MS Flow can understand. And so from our dynamic content, we'll pass in the query operation body variable. And again, we'll pass in a JSON schema, which can be found in the blog that I've published, found in the description below. And from there, we jump to the update features operation from the ArcGIS REST API. And again, this is a post operation. And again, we'll, up, we'll reference the parcels hosted feature service URL. And, ex and we will reference the update features operation. The content type, again, because we're posting information, will be application, form URL encoded. And then within the body, we'll include our format, which will be JSON. We'll again include our token, which we parsed above from the generate token operation. And the most important part here is the features. So because we're updating a service, we can use the features parameter attributes options. And so within our attributes in our service, we have an object ID, we have hydrant condition, and then we also have comments. And now one thing to note here is that because our object IDs that we've queried in the query operation above are returned as an array, when we try to use the object IDs array, Microsoft Flow will automatically pass or create a for loop because it assumes in an array there's more than one piece of content. There's more than one item in that array. And this is fine. And so when this happens, you'll get a new dynamic content dialog variable called current item, which will just represent the current object ID in the array that we got from the query operation. And so now what will happen is when I submit a survey, the parcel ID which I pass into this question will be updated in the hosted feature service. So in this case, we're going to pass in um, parcel ID 6, for example. And we're going to say that the hydrant condition is excellent. It is free from obstructions, and there are no leakages. And for a comment, we'll say this hydrant excellent condition. And then we'll click Submit. And if all goes well, we will see in our parcels hosted feature service that the parcel ID of 6 has been updated to a hydrant condition of excellent. And the comment of hydrant is in excellent condition. And we'll just do this again just to be sure that everything is working. We'll say hydrant ID of 10. Parcel ID of 4, we'll say this time. We'll say this hydrant is moderate condition. There are no obstructions. There is no leakage. This hydrant is in moderate condition. And so this was hydrant ID, parcel ID 4. We'll click Submit. And then in our parcels, we see that there is no comment yet, but once we refresh, we should see that the comment and the condition have been updated through Microsoft Flow and the Survey123 webhook and the ArcGIS REST API. So that is how to leverage the three together to automate your WebGIS and simplify your WebGIS workflows.